Now that we have ChatGPT and all the other language models, do we really need to be able to code in order to work in cybersecurity? AI can certainly help, but being able to read and write code for the jobs that require it will give you a huge advantage. Think about it like math. Just because we have calculators doesn't mean we stop teaching mathematics, right? And if we equate ChatGPT to a really fancy calculator, for example, the TI Inspire CX2, somebody who actually knows how to do math like a proper math undergrad is going to be able to leverage that calculator so much more and do all kinds of stuff with it that have some kind of real world applicability and real world impact. Versus somebody who doesn't really know how to do math, they can use the calculator and they can plug in the functions and do integration and all of this, but they're not gonna have a good sense for what they're actually doing and they're not going to be able to apply it to the real world as efficiently as somebody who actually knows how to do math. Not every cybersecurity job is gonna require you to code, but the ones that do require it, you're gonna to have to be able to read and write code in order to properly leverage AI in order to stay competitive. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the exact level of coding that you need for every major area or domain in cybersecurity. The truth is, depending on your job, you may never have to write a single line of code, or you may have to have coding skills beyond a normal corporate software engineer. It just really depends on what you're doing. So in order to give you an idea of what to expect once you get to the workplace in terms of cybersecurity and coding, we're going to define all the different levels of coding in terms of proficiency. And then we're going to talk about all the different cybersecurity domains and then what level of coding matches up with each domain. And then at the end, I'll talk about three scenarios as it pertains to me and my career in regards to coding in cybersecurity, like three different scenarios and situations where I may or may have not used coding and what level of coding I had to use. So first things first, before we can match the different coding levels to the different domains of cybersecurity, I'm gonna walk through and describe the different levels of coding uh, from level zero all the way to level seven. So level zero coding just means you basically have no knowledge of any language and you, you can't code at all. And if you look at code, you just have no idea what it does. Right, so level one would be you can kind of read and understand basic code, like you can get an idea for it, of, for what it does just by looking at it. Level two, you can kind of modify code a bit. So if you have a simple script, you're, you're able to modify it and maybe change it to make it do what you want it to do. Um, level three, you can do basic coding. So you can write simple scripts from scratch without relying on AI too much. Like you don't need AI to construct if statements and loops and those like really basic coding principles. Level four, I would consider this intermediate coding. You start getting into junior developer at this level um, where you kind of get to practicing data structures and algorithms and understanding those a bit. And maybe you start using version control like Git or something to keep track of your code. Level five, I would consider this like full blown application development. So you can build full scale, maybe like a, you can produce like a full stack application, maybe similar to like a corporate software engineer, but nothing too crazy. I would consider level six software architecture. This is where you start getting into systems design. You're designing multi-part systems to do something um, substantial, like more than just writing code, you're considering like the entire system. And then I would consider level seven, the, the top level. This is highly optimized, complex code. I would consider this the pinnacle. Basically, you're dealing with the extremely large systems and data sets where even like slight enhancements can save like millions of dollars for a corporation. So you can think about things like maybe you're coding in a high frequency trading environment or you're doing some kind of um, cloud infrastructure engineering at those major tech companies like Google, something like this, like really high end coding where like Optim like tiny optimizations really matter a lot and your code is super clean and you're just going to hackathons like you know you're basically like a s tier god level coder that's level seven and then now we're going to look at the different domains of cybersecurity, at least as defined by isc squared and then we're going to match these different levels of coding to the domains so first domain, uh, security and risk management, basically you can get away with not having any coding ability. In this domain, it wouldn't be uncommon for you to not really use code at all, to be honest. And then asset security, this would be like asset management and securing assets. Again, you can pretty much get away with not having any code for this or not being able to code for this. It's always helpful sometimes if you have to read something or maybe you wanna like automate your personal tasks or something, but the actual job function, it's unlikely to use uh, code beyond level one and zero for this one. And then security architecture and, and engineering, um, I would say this ranks from level four all the way up to level seven. It just depends on what you're architecting and engineering. If you're at like a really, um, 
I guess, well-known company like those Microsofts and such, um, you'll probably be getting into systems design quite a bit. And at the very least, you're going to have to be able to like really read code well. So I would count on at least level four for architecture and engineering. Um, it, it depends, but as a general rule of thumb, that's my opinion. And then uh, communications and network security. Again, this depends, but at the very least, you need to have code literacy, like be able to read some kind of code or at least be able to read JSON or something. There's a lot of like uh, SDN, like software defined networks these days, and you're probably going to need to use Python or something at some point. So I would count on at least basic code literacy, but maybe up to level three, possibly. Identity and access management, pretty much you don't need to really be able to code to do this. You might have to parse some kind of JSON or some kind of other structured data. I wouldn't really count JSON as actual coding, but I would say like at least level one, being able to like understand code, like maybe you went through like a basic Python course or something. And then security assessment and testing. Uh, for this one, I would say like at least level three, like basic coding, because maybe you're doing vulnerability management or something and you need to do some automated remediation. And don't forget like penetration testing also like falls under this category, like security assessments and testing. And depending on what you're doing, you might need like all the way up to level seven, right? This is an extreme scenario, but if you're like a nation state cyber operator or something where you need to get into a system that's impossible to get into, you're going to have to be able to like craft something beyond like convent like what a conventional software engineer would do so this security ass assessment testing i would say like level three all the way up to like level seven and beyond it just depends on what you're doing and then security operations um level one at the very very least you may have to do some kind of automation somewhere but it just depends on what you're doing right i would say level one minimum all the way up to like maybe level three and four just depending on what you're doing and then software development and application security to be honest, for this one, I would say like a minimum of level four in terms of coding ability, all the way up to level seven, of course. And I do want to say that even the jobs that don't really require coding, if you know how to code, it tends to help you out a lot because I've had jobs where coding wasn't required, but because I practiced a lot and learned how to code, I could make my job that much more easier. So getting into the three scenarios related to cybersecurity and coding in my career. So for my current job in terms of cybersecurity and coding, I currently do about a six, like a level six of coding. I architected and engineered what's called the CyberRange project. We currently support it. And that thing requires a lot of automation and like optimization on the back end. It's basically a platform that allows people to practice cybersecurity operations like threat hunting, vulnerability management, general incident response. And there's a lot of stuff on the back end holding that thing together, a lot of Python code. I say this is a level six because I had to do like a lot of systems design in the beginning. And it's on a cloud platform and it consumes cloud resources and it can cost a lot of money because the users have their own virtual machine. There's like a lot of log ingestion and like a, a endpoint de detection and response on the back end. There's just a lot that needs to be like babysat and taken care of. And if I don't code well or don't optimize it, it's going to cost us like a lot of money, right? So this particular job, I would count as a level six. And I also have like a, an operations manager and then um, a backend engineer, and both of them, they're probably operating at like probably level four, level four and like level five or so. But yeah, that's the cyber range. And then the second thing, um, I had an, an interview with Amazon for a security engineer position like a couple of years ago. And for that, I had like a few coding practice questions. The first one I would say is probably like level two. Basically, they showed me some code and I had to like look through it and understand it and pick out the vulnerabilities. So for example, I had to identify the use of root credentials like hard coded into the code. I had to identify potential SQL injection. And I had to identify something else, uh, like a bad SQL query that returned like too many records. I didn't have to produce code for the interview, but I had to be able to read code well. So at least like between like level two and three. And then for my subsequent interviews, they gave me some leak code easy questions. So I'd say those are probably around level, I would say maybe like level four and five, um, because there's a lot of people who can develop applications, but they can't really do algorithms well. First one, I believe it was like a Caesar cipher. And the second problem was a uh, run length and coding or something like this. Those are both pretty easy for me because I, I studied like beyond what they were asking me. But that interview um, for a job that 
a security engineer job that paid like a net of two, almost 250K. I needed between like level four and five coding for that one, I would say. And then finally, the third scenario, um, my title was a senior information security engineer, but it was for like a information security risk and compliance. It was like a GRC position where I was um, reviewing projects in like different stuff that was going through the pipeline. I had to like do a security review on them. That job paid about 120K, but I didn't have to do like literally any coding for that job. I think I used coding a bit to make my life easier for certain things, but I didn't have to do like literally any coding for that. Most of the jobs I've had in my career, I'm not gonna talk about all of them, but most of them I've been able to use coding like in some way, shape or form. Um, especially my last job at Microsoft, it was like really heavy Python. At that time, when that when I was doing that job, like ChatGPT came out and GPT helped me to be able to perform my job, like to be honest, like three or four, like maybe like 5x speed, because I could just go through API documentation really, really quickly and just produce code really fast. So it's difficult to explain to people who don't know how to code, but the difference between knowing how to code and not knowing how to code and being able to use ChatGPT is like night and day. Like you can tell ChatGPT to do stuff if you don't know how to code and it will it will produce like you know an app for you or a script or something so i just recommend you know at least learning how to code doing like a couple of projects and then use chat gpt along the way to help you understand concepts and it you you're just going to be better off for it. Like, trust me. So if you're interested in cybersecurity and you want to code, we made this other video where it talks about the best laptops for cybersecurity, depending on what you're doing. I was really objective in that video. So definitely check that out. I think it will help a lot. Also, we're doing a lot of high quality, high effort content on Instagram. A lot of it is around physique building, diet, exercise, and general life optimization. And most of the content is abroad with my team, like in Thailand and Japan and, and other areas like this. So definitely check it out. Um, I talk about my routines and stuff and I try to make it like really, really useful because if you want to do well in your career, whether or not you're doing cybersecurity or whatever else, um, it helps if you're healthy and you're like implementing halo effect and just being the best version of yourself possible. So check that out and we'll see you in the next video.